team, but I, as far as I know, I'm the only one that has their rock sliders on the machine with these fender flares. Took a little engineering to do it. In this video, I'm going to take you through the installation of fender flares and rock slider on my 2020 Defender Limited and also the mounting of the 32 inch Evo 1 tires. New viewers and marauders, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy this video. Please consider subscribing, sharing, and liking. Thank you. This was a win. As you know, I'm debating buying another Can Am uh, side by side, a sport side by side, and there's a whole list of accessories that I'm going to need to mount on that. Um, and and I thought it was a daunting task when I started reviewing the accessories for the new side by side, and then I started editing this video that was done, God, eight months ago, nine months ago. And holy cow, was it a lot of work to install the rock sliders on this vehicle. Um, you essentially have to remove all the finished components, panels, around the door opening. You install two uh, rock slider mounts and you pop rivet with these heavy rivets. I can't remember if they're 3 16 rivets. Um, you pop rivet these these brackets forward on the front of the machine and on the back to mount the rock slider. So you can watch me as I go through the steps. You know when you found the last faster and removed it when the body panel falls off. You'll understand. I'm installing the forward rock slider mount using these, I think they're 3 16th pop rivets. And I broke two pop rivet guns installing these, uh, the plates, and also the, um, the rock sliders get mounted with the pop rivets also on the bottom. And man, I hated these rivets. They, they took so much force to um, get them to rivet these mounting plates to the machine. But I will tell you, I must make it clear, the quality of Can-Am's accessories have greatly improved. I'm installing the rear rock slider mount and again it uses the pop rivets to install that and oh man my forearms were worn out by the time I got to the second mount. I removed all the body panels around the door to install the two rock slider mounting plates. Then you have to drill out on the outside edge of the skid plate bottom along the, the edge of the door. You have to drill out all those rivets that hold that, that the edge of the skid plate by the door. I think there might be six. Drill those out, remove them and then pop rivet, put new rivets in that will also hold the rock slider in place. So they, those rivets will go through the rock slider, through the skid plate on the bottom. And then there's a bolt front and back that holds the rock slider to the mounts. Pull the drill right up in there, tough. Other than drilling a blind hole for, on the forward part of the fender flare, the forward-most hole from, from inside the inner fender, the installation of the front fender goes pretty well. They do have dimples in the existing body panel where to drill the holes for the fender flare. I double-checked them on the fender flare. The fit was excellent and the hardware was very good. Front fender flares go on very easily. The dump bed fender flare installation was very easy. Again, they had dimples in the body panels. Just drill them out, put the screws in. I think there was a bolt that held the fender flare underneath to the dump body. This, this part, this installation was very easy. So I've never seen anyone 
fit these fender flares on with a rock slider. And I'm going to trim a quarter inch around this entire piece to clear some gaps so that I can fit in here. Now it's not a great fit. You can even see before I even start cutting it up, there is some gaps up in here. But I, I want this piece, I wanna keep the doors clean and I'm, I'm gonna trim it up on my bandsaw and lay it out. Last step. Where the, where the fender flare was going to be touching the rock slider, and again, I've never seen this installation, I was marking and trimmed off, I believe, three-eighths of an inch around the fender flare in that area, and it worked extremely well. My recommendation, it's an opinion. I don't know everything, but my opinion, suggestion to my viewers, especially my young viewers, collect tools. Try to do as much as you can with your own hand and, and, and mind. And when you have tools in your house that you've collected over the years, you can use them for many tasks. I've used them on my automobiles, tractors, ATV, side by side, my properties, especially my properties. Who would have thought that I'd be using my hobby, my remote control airplane Dremel tool, the old standby, and my woodworking tools to be modifying a fender flare on a side-by-side. -side. When you get older, this is important to keep our mind sharp and our eye, hand, eye and hand coordinations um, the best they can be because those items deteriorate as we get older. Just a suggestion. Viewers, I'm not a master mechanic, woodworker, or machinist. Please, when you're using your tools, follow good safety procedures and practices. You can see in this section I am not wearing eye protection, and I absolutely should. I do wear ear protection most of the time. Shame on me. Be a better craftsman than I am. Wear your, your eyes and ear protection. I usually do, and I obviously forgot here. I'd say that's pretty doggone good. I had to drill a hole in the rock slider to insert a rubber expansion nut for the bottom bolt of the fender flare. And, and when you put that bolt in, the rubber expands and, and like a mushroom and holds the bolt in place. There's two or three other bolts that hold this quarter panel, this quarter mud flare to the, the defender and it helps to have another set of hands when you're installing. Not the best camera angle when I'm wearing shorts. Sorry you gotta look at my hairy legs. Um, so after I put the fender flares on I gotta pull off the stock I think they're 27 inch Bighorn tires and put on my 32 inch Evil 1 tires. Look at the heft in the suspension. Look at the size of these arms and the reinforcing of it in this shock. can -Am has my attention, boy. It's been six years since I purchased my last can -Am. I think it was 2014 I had a can -Am Maverick. First sport machine, 100 horsepower sport machine. And their accessories have gotten much better on their new machines to install. So that's on assembly mode. Oh man, she's a beast. Love it. Come on, you gotta love that. You gotta love that. Now the clearance is good here. I may have to trim this like I did on my Mac, start up here and trim this back and maybe down and around the bottom if it's rubbing. Uh, new machine, I don't think I'm taking it out in the rain. Let's put the rears on. I think we can take this off. Love it. Man, the back is even stronger. Gotta love these tires.
from the mat, so I spun them around a little bit. So I'm hunched over, my back is starting to give me problems. And uh, believe it or not, although I look like I'm in pain, it's sore. It's a wonderful pain. I love, I love completing projects in my garage, especially on these machines. And I just love the look of this machine. Come on. I'm worn out. I've been working all day on this. Broke a, a rivet gun on it. But... This is as good as I could do with this seam, but I, as far as I know, I'm the only one that has their rock sliders on the machine with these fender flares. Took a little engineering to do it. Uh, man, I love the meat on the four corners. Love it. Got to put the bumper on. It didn't come with a bumper on it, surprisingly. Maybe I'll do that after dinner. Love it. I'll give you a look. I'll start it up and give you a look at the tire clearance. So it's got it, it's shit, smallest spot. Let's lock it out all the way. No rubbing issues here. So at its closest spot, it's got at least an inch of clearance. But the problem is when it squats, this comes up and it could rub. But it almost looks like the geometry of this front suspension is canted a little forward. So only a test drive will be able to tell. Set at 68. Let's kick this up. Let's put it at 72. And let's see how these tires ride. That we're on here. Big horns, long horns. Um, but these are actually quieter and a smoother ride. Definitely, definitely faster than the XMR. Quicker. I don't know if it's at 10 horsepower or the gearing, or what it is, but it uh, definitely uh, is a little faster. Nope. She is smooth, smooth, up to 25 miles an hour. Okay, let's, let's try hopping here. I'm running at 15 pounds in these tires, and I like it. I'm gonna ask her if she wants to go for a ride. Love, I love these 32 inch Evil Ones, Chad, M Evil Ones, Chad at uh, Pioneer Motorsports recommended them for my XMR. Wanted to put big shoes on that and uh, I wanted to keep them to put on this vehicle and I think it's a winner look, especially with these mud flaps. That is a real test, these Fender Can Am. Knocked it out of the park with these Fender Flares. I just took it for a ride in my neighborhood after rain and there is almost no water on the doors. Little backsplash from the low of the front tire on this. Look at the, re the, look at the sidewalls are actually dry. Fen excellent Fender Flares. Excellent Fender Flares. Look at that. Door is dry. A little splatter here where it's kicking up. A little splatter there. 
Otherwise, she's in good shape. Love it. That's a win. I encourage everyone, especially my older viewers, we need to get off the couch, get to work in our garage, basement, or on our property, get outside and ride the great outdoors. Uh, you'll know why in a future episode, why that's important to me now. Um, please, if you ride motorsports, wear a helmet to set an example for others and for your own protection. Let's respect each other and our opinions, and I hope to see you on the trail. Thank you, and God bless.